actually everybody on Zoom. So please speak up, A, if you can't hear me, and uh, B, if you have questions. Uh, first up is a review of the minutes. Were there any additions or amendments to the minutes? If not, I'd take a motion to approve the minutes from Wednesday, August 12th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting of August 12th. Okay. Uh, we have a motion, I believe, from Commissioner Swenson. Yes. And a second? I'll second that motion. And a second from Commissioner Salas Ramirez? I think that was Burroughs. Burroughs. Sorry. <laughs> if you could say your name, that would be helpful. Um, okay. So we are going to do roll call votes for absolutely everything, including the approval of the minutes. Uh, Commissioner Swenson? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Burroughs? Aye. Commissioner Schrock? Aye. I myself vote aye. The motion passes. Okay. First up on the agenda, uh, a petition from Diane Hansen. Is that what you have first, Holly? Yes. Okay. Uh, petitioner appeals uh, from the city code section, which limits fence construction adjacent to corner lots. Uh, they are proposing a six foot tall privacy fence located in the corner lot. The existing lot is over the minimum 6,000 square foot requirement. About 75 feet of six foot privacy fence will be within the two and a half foot setback area. There is an existing fence that is four and a half feet from the property line where the new fence is proposed. The closest driveway is 12 feet back from the fence. Uh, and I see staff notes that the fence is restricted to the back side yard. There is sidewalk on two sides of the property and the fence ends about 12 feet from the south property line. Uh, this would be a recommendation to council. Uh, go ahead, Holly, take us through this. Yeah, actually, that pretty much covers it. <laughs> those are all the details. So the um, so those of you on Zoom and I think here in the yeah, in the I... meeting room can see the the Google Map or Google Earth. Um, so the I've got the little hand here, kind of showing where the uh, fence would be located. So it just juts out here and goes along the east side of some uh, some shrubbery, which is uh, probably pretty pretty low. I don't think it's taller than three feet. And then would connect in here about, I'm just gonna look at my drawing here. I think it was, uh, it's about 12 feet from this property line so this driveway here I don't, shouldn't be an issue so the fence would be here to here just replacing what's existing um so just some notes again the fence is restricted to the back side yard um, and the fence ends about 12 feet from the south property line do you have any uh any questions about what she's asking for or any questions about any concerns about uh, safety or any other issues that would be relevant? That driveway you showed, is that her driveway? No, it's the neighbor's driveway. Um, that is what business is that? That's um, the heating, the heating. Uh, is it Greenman? Yeah, Greenman. Yeah, that's Greenman. Oh, okay. Holly, do we know, it looks like they're looking to go a foot higher than the current fence uh, from five to six feet, is that correct? And do we have any concerns about sight and vision with that? Um, I've been to the location several times. She's been contemplating replacing that fence for years. Um, and I just suggested that she try a fence appeal. Um, so one of the 
Um, yeah, she, so she did just, she did want to have a privacy fence. Um, uh, I, I understand she does have some um, children that play in the back area at times. Um, and she is located on kind of a busy road. Um, but I, I didn't see anything that I thought would be a, a site obstruction from a traffic perspective. And even backing out of that driveway, I mean, I guess I didn't, you know, look into how often Greenman uses that storage area. But um, there have never been any vehicles parked there that I've noticed. And then backing out, there's still 12 feet between the fence and the driveway, which is more than we generally have, even if we had it angled for site purposes. And again, I mean, it's been like that for trying to think we had a permit for it. Uh, it was in the 80s or 90s, so many years uh, in that same location without any issues. Uh, this is a public hearing. Are there any citizens either in person or on Zoom who are interested in speaking or asking questions on this topic? I'm just going to double check our. Holly, it doesn't, it, it's just her backyard, correct? This is Melissa. Um, it doesn't go out to the corner, does it? No, it doesn't go all the way to the corner of her property. Okay. It, it's like 12 feet set back from the corner. Okay. It's just not, and then it's four and a half feet to the, uh, to where the existing fence is, which is where she wants to place it. I think it's just, there's existing landscaping. Any other questions from any of the commissioners on this? If not, I would entertain a motion on this proposal. This is Commissioner Stewart. Just wanted to confirm that there are no safety issues or concerns uh, regarding the sight line with this fence. No, no, I'm not. I didn't find anything that would that I thought was a concern. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the fence um, as presented in the application. Okay, we have a motion to approve as presented. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. We have a second. Any other? Hey, hey. Go ahead. To clarify, this is Commissioner Stewart again. This is the recommendation to the council. Yes, I believe that is correct. Thank you. No further questions. Any other questions or discussion before we take a roll call vote on this? Okay, uh, Commissioner Swenson. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Burroughs. Aye. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Postma votes aye. Motion passes. On to City Council. All right. Next up, we have a petition from uh, Joy Marianha. I'm sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly. Um, Holly, uh, why don't you, oh, uh, for a cup, for CUP, uh, will you take us through this one a little bit? 
Yeah, Ms. Mariana is asking for a conditional use permit uh, to approve a home occupation. She is proposing to have a massage business located at her home at 1407 7th Street Southeast. It's in an R1 single family residential district. Um, the, um, she, has had a, she has had a massage business here in Austin previously, uh, moved away for a while and now has come back. Um, so she, the, in order to get uh, her license approved, um, she needed to have a, you know, inspection by our building department. Um, she has to go through background check with the police department and also has to have uh, an inspection by our zoning department. And just speaking to her, realized that she didn't have the home occupation um, approval. So she made the application um, and brought, uh, brought this here tonight. Um, she is asking for a conditional use permit, which planning commission will make a final decision. Um, if it is not appealed to council within 15 days, um, I have not gotten any comments from any of the neighbors, uh, about this, uh, petition or application. Um, and no notification did go out. There's a list in the packet. Um, the petitioner applicant is here on the Zoom call if we have any questions for her. Um, home occupation is defined in our ordinance. Um, I'll just quick summarize. The occupation should occur only on the principal residential structure on the site. Should be located on one floor only, not occupy more than a third of that floor area. Um, some of this isn't entirely relevant to what she's doing. Um, no mechanical or electrical equipment used that would create a uh, nuisance. Parking should be limited to two or less off-street customer parking spaces at any given time. And any sign should be in compliance with our sign code. Um, I did, like I said, we did go and inspect the area that she's proposing to um, do the business in. And it is just one room um, in her house. Um, and it's my understanding that she can it, well, it looks like she can accommodate off street parking. She has a garage with a big driveway. Um, the appointments will be scheduled so that clients aren't waiting on the premises um, while she finishes with another client. Um, some of the things that you should take into consideration, and let me, I'll just set my mic down for a second while I pull this up on Google Maps. Without these labeled, I'm trying to figure out which one is yours, Joy. That's 7th Street. It's going to take me too long to find this. Do any of you, do any of you have any questions about? How you should pick the mic back up. Oh yeah. So there is an aerial in your packet that shows the um, parking area in front of the house, uh, in front of the garage. And the location of the neighboring properties and the, you know, the width of the street. Um, so there is on-street parking. There's some cars in the aerial um, that are on the street parked. So again, it looks like any off-street parking 
or you know any parking that would be necessary is available at least as proposed as the business is proposed and with the CUP um, you can add conditions so the uh, number of clients at one time could be um, added as a requirement to the CUP and if that becomes a nuisance issue um, and there the CUP is violated um, there would be another public hearing to revoke the CUP um, some of the things that you should consider is whether the use will create an excessive burden on existing infrastructure um, and think public facilities and utilities that serve the area um, whether the use will sufficiently be compatible with uh, residentially zoned or that homes will not be depreciated in value and that there would not be a deterrence to development of any vacant land that the structure on the site should have an appearance that will not have an adverse effect upon adjacent residential properties um, in this instance I did visit um, I don't know if any of you have gone by but it's just a really it's just a nice uh, house in a pretty nice neighborhood um, the use uh, in the opinion of Planning Commission is reasonably re reasonably related to the overall needs of the city and to the existing land use the use is consistent with the purpose of our zoning chapter which does allow home occupations as a conditional use um, that the use will not cause traffic hazard or congestion existing businesses will not be adversely affected um, that the use will not result in unnecessary direction, destruction of natural features um, nothing would change on that site at this point um, and then also consider the geographical area involved um, character of surrounding area um, whether there will be any new sense associated with the use um, we recommend that there's some accommodation of off-street parking as needed and again that appointments be scheduled so that clients are not waiting um, behind other clients Ali I know you mentioned that this is a final unless appealed um, remind me I believe a CUP is good for five years and then has to be renewed or is that incorrect no at this time we have an interim use permit uh, which is uh, temporary the conditional use permit actually stays with the property um, although we are changing some language to you know make that it's not in effect now but typically there's language that would allow the CUP or the use to um, uh, expire after a certain period of time of not using it but in this instance it, it will stay perpetually with the property so if someone else wanted to come in they would be um, coming in to that property with the ability to have a massage establishment but they'd still in this instance have to go through all the licensing the background checks the inspections if they wanted to do anything different than what Ms. Mariana is doing or have any um, you know like certain business hours or more people they'd have to amend the conditional use permit so it would come back to us if they strictly followed the existing conditional use permit there wouldn't be an issue thank you and this is recorded um, at the recorder's office okay. so it says a record on the property any questions for Holly or the petitioner right now from the commissioners Holly as long as it's in a residential area is there a limit to the how early in the morning or how late at night the business can operate um uh, you can you can create conditions if you want I haven't made any recommendations um, it sounded like when I spoke to Ms. Mariana that um, that she was uh, I guess uh, not doing anything unusual as far as I guess Austin's an early morning town though right um, but uh, yeah that's certainly something she can speak to um, Ms. Mariana are you still are you still on the call? Yeah, the 
you're on mute. There, better? Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't have any plans to do too early in the morning or too late at night. Um, and all my clients would be by referral, word of mouth only. And at this point, with COVID precautions and everything else, I'm allowing at least an hour, to 45 minutes to an hour between clients. So the parking wouldn't be an issue either. There's one point I do want to clarify. I did move back to Austin in 2010. I was living in the house right next door at 1501 7th Street. My parents owned it. And I did apply for a massage business license out of that property. But as I grew more taking care of them full time, um, I, I dropped that part of my license, but I've maintained my city of Austin license since I've been here. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Mariana from the commissioners? Uh, this is an open public hearing. Is there anybody else in person or on Zoom interested in speaking on this? If not, I would entertain a motion from a, one of the commissioners. Uh, this would just be uh, a motion to um, approve with the recommendations or a motion to deny or a motion to approve with the recommendations made plus any additional recommendations. Melissa Swenson. I'll make a motion to approve the continuous use permit for the um, massage business at 1407 7th Street Southeast. Thank you, Commissioner Swenson. We have a motion to approve with the uh, staff recommendations in place. Any second to that? This is Karam Salas. I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, questions, or amendments to the motion from the commissioners? Okay, if not, we will do a roll call vote on the motion to approve the CUP. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Burroughs? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez? Aye. Commissioner Swenson? Aye. And Commissioner Postma votes aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right, on to our next one. Scrolling, scrolling. Okay, we have a uh, petition from JS2 Properties to take uh, two lots and convert them into one existing lot. Oh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. To take one lot and make it into two lots. Holly, will you take us through this one? Yeah, so our ordinance does not allow to, us to have two primary structures on one lot. In this instance, this is presumably existed prior to our adoption of the zoning code. Um, there's one parcel with two homes on it. 
um, the petitioners are proposing that this parcel be split and they've included a survey um, showing the proposed split um, to allow there to be two properties that could be individually owned versus the situation they have now. Right now they just have two, I mean they could still both be rentals. Right now they're, they're both rental properties. Um, but uh, you know, if there was an owner, I mean at this point there could be two owners but they'd own the whole thing 50-50. There's no way to split the property. Um, if they, they could have an owner with a rental property, I guess, but um, I think they feel like it would be more marketable. Um, and uh, Jacob from JS2 is here um, and he can speak to that if you have any questions. But um, so yeah, so they propose to split it into two properties, which will make it another non-conforming use because the two parcels will not meet the minimum lot size that we require in the city. Um, the, re the existing lot is a little bit shy of the 6,000 square feet. It's 5,670 square feet. Um, so that's not precisely conforming either. Um, the new lots would be, I think the one to the north would be 1,980 square feet. So quite a bit smaller than what our our minimum requirement is. And then the one to the south would be 3,690 square feet. Um, the properties would um, have access, each property would have access from, um, I think that's 7th Street, yep, 7th Street Northwest. Um, then there is also the alley uh, to the north of the smaller parcel. Um, each property has its own utilities, is my understanding. Um, and the use will not change, it'll remain residential. So I don't think you've ever had, at least the commissioners I have right now, have had the a change of non-conforming use. So in our ordinance, we do allow a change. Um, under the ordinance, any non-conforming use of a structure or structure and premises may be changed to another non-conforming use provided that Planning Commission and Council shall find that the proposed use is equally appropriate or more appropriate to the district than the existing non-conforming use. In permitting the change, um, you may require appropriate conditions and safeguards in accord with the provisions in the zoning chapter. There's really not, I mean, in splitting the property, there, there really aren't a lot of options. This is a neighborhood that's been built uh, for many years, um, so there's not really a lot of room to expand based on neighboring properties. Um, you know, there are some other options potentially if, you know, if the property to the north were demoed, you know, and maybe added in your garage. But at this point, that doesn't seem to be financially most feasible uh, option for the property owners. So thus, they are petitioning us for the non-conforming use change. And uh, I do have it pulled up on here. Um, on Google Maps, it's the one with the red vehicle here. So this is the parcel. Does anybody have any questions? Again, um, Jacob is here. He can ask, answer anything that maybe I don't have in the materials that you might have questions about. Holly, I know you sent out a lot of mailings. Any feedback from any neighbors? Oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Um, no, nothing. I have not had any. Oh, wait, actually, Laura Helley, our council member, lives in that neighborhood and got one of the notices. And she said, she called me and said the neighbors had talked to her about it, um, some neighbors, and were curious. Um, so then I just sent her the information about what they were trying to do, and 
just to create two parcels out of one, and then it would still be residential, and I didn't get any follow-up from that. Okay. So they, they each have their own driveway currently, and it'll stay that way? Did I miss that part? Or? Jacob, can you maybe explain how the driveway works? I mean, I think they share driveway. I think there'd be an easement, maybe. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Yes. So when you see the two vehicles right now, I'm assuming at one point there was a garage because there's some, there was, when we bought it 15, 16 years ago, there was um, a, a footing that was there that we ended up taking, had taken out. But um, if you go to the east of those two cars, um, that's actually a parking lot. There's a drive over curb right there. So what we did with the survey is we actually separated um, the property line basically right between those two vehicles. So each person, each house will have their own individual driveway, although it, it, it's going to look like it's one um, because it, that's going to all be gravel or cement or, or asphalt or whatever, but they will individually each have their own parking spot in their own driveway, but it will appear as, it's, as if it's sheer. And Jacob, could you do me a favor just for public record? Could you state your name and address, please? Uh, yes, my name is Jacob Smith uh, with GS2 Properties. I just moved, so I currently reside in Blooming Prairie at 206 2nd Street Northeast in Blooming Prairie. Thank you so much. Any other questions for the petitioner uh, from the commissioners? This is Commissioner Burroughs. I just want to clarify that there's currently no garages on either of these properties. Is that correct? That is correct. Any other questions? Are uh, there... Holly, are you aware of any other property in the city of Austin that would have a area of less than 2,000 square feet? You know, I haven't looked for a parcel similar, but um, we do have some pretty small parcels. Um, it's harder to see on this Google Earth because there are no property lines on here. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty small. Yeah, it wouldn't be typical, but I don't. Yeah, I can't say that there are or aren't. It wouldn't surprise me if there are smaller parcels, but maybe not that small. At least nothing that I've worked on in the six years that I've been here. Um, as far as you know, any permitting or anything like that. It could always be combined later. You know, if one of those pro properties was demoed at some point. I mean, they could be combined again. It's just there'd be two owners to deal with, potentially. Do you happen to know the history of why the 6,000 square feet was picked as our zoning minimum? Or does Mr. Byram? You know, I, well, and you can talk about this too, but, you know, typically with the zoning standards, you know, part of it's, aesthetic you know so the way that the city looks there's some uniformity and then the idea of you know um you know providing i guess some breathing room you know if if structures are you know too close together you know there are potentially safety hazards um you know if any additions or any kind of work were done on any of these properties they'd still have to meet you know like fire code building code all those kinds of things um so I guess I don't foresee there being like any kind of safety concerns or hazards related to that size parcel. Um, you know, I think we have the infrastructure, so a little bit higher density isn't necessarily a 
bad thing. I just don't know that that would be super marketable to the average person, not having, you know, much of a yard or, you know, and then not having the ability to have a garage, potentially. Um, so I'm thinking most people probably wouldn't go this route unless it was a necessity. You need, we want to add anything, Craig, or, okay. He shook his head no. Holly, so these are both residential properties occupied right now. We're not really changing any use of the structures. I don't remember, uh, Jacob, can you, t are they vacant or are they occupied right now? I know you own them as rental properties. And your yeah, they're rental properties. They're currently um, a single man and the well, they're single men in, in, in both, I guess. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch that. Did you catch that? Yeah, they're, they're both rented. Yes. They're both rented. Okay. And were you hoping to sell at some point, or was that one of the possibilities or an option? Uh, yeah, it's always an option. Um, yeah. It's. It doesn't fit the FHA guidelines, so if at some point, if we, if we sold them, whether as a combined or separate, um, as a combined parcel, you you can't get anybody to go and get 30-year financing on them. So if, if we wanted to sell, say, one of the out or sell both of them, it would only be an investor. We could never send, you know, sell, sell them to somebody who wanted to live in one and then rent the other unless they were able to pay cash for them so it, it changes the marketability but um i don't know it just it just seems to be a, a better use um of the property to have individual ones versus combined I, I don't i know there's one other in austin i don't know if there are other ones but there is one in the southeast that has two houses on one lot it's just a it i'm a real estate agent so from a real estate agent's standpoint it's it's, it's an anomaly and it's hard to even figure out what you do with them Thanks. I'll say for me, I kind of, I, I always struggle with uh, non-conforming uses. Um, so I'm sort of like, which one is quote unquote better? And while I definitely don't love necessarily the idea of a 2000 square foot lot, um, I, I don't see any way around it. And I definitely do understand the perspective that it's more marketable and probably easier for folks to each have their own lot versus be on a combined lot. So at least from that aspect, having one less double lot in Austin, I, I would be okay with. I don't know if any other, other commissioners have any thoughts on this. I, just for me, I, I just have a hard time going if we have a minimum 6,000 square foot and we want some sort of compliance with that throughout the city, even aesthetically, to then approve something that's, what, two-thirds less than that? Um, I just have a hard time with that, especially if there's a shared driveway that's going to require a shared driveway agreement between the two parcels. I just have a hard time with this one, given the, the substantial decrease in what our minimum uh, is. I definitely understand that that line of thought, and I and I don't disagree. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling with that as well. Anyone else kind of want to weigh in with their thoughts on this one? I would just say from a zoning standpoint and from a regulatory standpoint, it is hard to deal with two primary residences on one parcel. But again, you know, I guess, you know, I would agree that, you know, that is a small lot um, that's proposed. I mean, you can't get around that, but. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just pretty unusual. I should also throw out there that this is a public hearing. If there's anybody in person or on Zoom who wants to speak to this, now would be a great time to do so.
so far we've gotten kind of a mixed reaction from the couple commissioners who weighed in so i'd love it if a few others kind of gave us their thoughts so we could see where this might be headed so how i mean i see it both ways but like if you break it into two and it's not going to approve for an fha loan what's the difference if you leave it in one parcel and someone else chooses to buy it make one of the properties a garage or tear one of them down and make a garage then it is closer to the conforming size right i mean if, if they're not going to be able to get an fha loan on the smaller properties anyway i think he said the I opposite i think he said with two primary residences there were no. can you explain again jacob yeah, I mean, you're not going to make the FHA or FHA, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines for uh, having two principal residences on a single lot. That just, it, it's you're not going to get a loan, not a, a secondary market loan, maybe something um, with a local lender, but having two separate. I don't know if there's minimum lot sizes. I, I, I'm not familiar with that being an issue, but as far as, at some point, if you wanted to sell these, if we wanted to sell these as an and there's no plan to tear one of them down. They're both very nice houses. Um, so just that one. I just don't see that happening. Okay. And, and to reiterate, the city actually came to me asking me to do this. Can you explain, Jacob? Me? I believe it was you who had come. I don't know. We were talking about this. The streets getting tore up right now, and I think you had actually asked me and said, "Are you are you uh, opposed to maybe splitting this?" And I said, "We talked to Craig Boyum about it 15, 16 years ago, and and it just never went anywhere." So I, it was the city who had suggested um, the both of them were non-conforming. They don't fit the guidelines, but the the lesser of two evils is to have two two individual parcels versus having one parcel with two homes it's just it's just an anomaly yeah i mean this is really the only option if you wanted to have two separate properties again there's not any space to expand in that area um, again it's just a built-up area um, unless the property is in poor condition i mean there's nothing that would allow us to remove it um well and it, there's a rental ordinance that this obviously has passed to be a rental property on both buildings yeah correct? we've done the northwest so. those properties were inspected is that correct jacob yeah duane came in probably whenever was that a year ago yeah i mean we i think we started in the northwest so we're down in the southwest now okay yeah and it, for me personally, as much as I don't love non-conforming, I'm not necessarily interested in removing what I'm assuming is fairly low-income housing that's passing steady standards right now. So, any other commissioner Stewart? Yep. Just wanted to know if uh, Mr. Byram had any perspective or context that you'd like to add to this discussion. Uh, this is Craig Byram, and uh, no, not really. I think uh, everything that's been said is about as clear as you can you can make it. There's a non-conforming use, uh, a non-conforming situation there, and we have a process for changing non-conforming situations and the whole idea is to try to make them better not worse and so the judgment is up to you folks on whether this makes it better uh, or worse it's a policy decision not necessarily a legal one at this point thank you i think the language is actually as good as or <laughs> as bad as or or better. <laughs> All 
Okay. Um, I'll be. I don't really have a sense, to be honest, where the commissioners are looking right now. Uh, is there any other? Does anybody want to make a motion? Does anyone want to have a little bit of discussion here? You I'll guys just, tell me how you want to go forward with this one. I'll just read the non-conforming use change okay. portion again, just for a reminder. Um, so any non-conforming use of a structure or structure and premises may be changed to another non-conforming use, provided that um, the board shall find that the proposed use is equally appropriate or more appropriate to the district than the existing non-conforming use. And permitting the change, uh, you may require appropriate conditions and safeguards in accord with the provisions in the zoning chapter. So if there were conditions that would make you feel more comfortable with the change of non-conforming use, those can certainly be suggested. Just a thought. Uh, right now you have a non-conforming use because there are two structures on a single parcel and that use is not allowed. When you split this into two, you don't really have a non-conforming use anymore because each lot will be a single family residence, so the use will be compliant. Think of it in terms of a variance on lot, minimum lot size. Um, is there something unique about this property that would justify us not applying the normal rules? One might argue that the unique thing is that there are two apparently uh, good condition, well kept up uh, homes already constructed, making it impossible to create two lots of our normal size. So in, in that sense, in my mind, logically, I'm thinking you're eliminating a non-conforming use in favor of sort of a, a development standard being waived. I don't know if that's helpful or not. Thank you. I, I will say for me, one of the things that has me leaning towards approving this is the fact that even if we could magically say we want, you know, that second smaller home to be turned into a garage, and this be one lot that is still not a conforming lot because it is still under 6,000 square feet. So while I don't really love either option, I do personally think that having two separate lots with, you know, rental income, rental houses on each one is probably the best way forward that I can see on this. I agree with you, Commissioner. I think that with the lot sizes, if one, um, a garage or, or a secondary structure wouldn't, wouldn't work, um, there is, is one total lot with two um, single family residences on it. Um, so I tend to agree that I think they should be split up into two parcels. Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? Okay, well, I guess I will go ahead and make the motion to approve this. Uh, remind me, how are we looking at a variance here? Uh, we're just calling it a change in non-conforming use, which is allowed in the ordinance. Okay, I, I would make a motion to approve this change in non-conforming use. Uh, that's Commissioner Postma. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Swenson and I will second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Any further discussion on this one? Can you add that it's the same or uh, that is equally appropriate or more appropriate to the district than the existing nonconforming use? Yes. Okay, thank you. you got that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got this open for last chance at discussion before we'll do a roll call vote. Okay, Commissioner Schrock. I think you're on mute. Oh, there you go. I sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Burroughs. Thanks. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Swenson. Aye. 
Commissioner Postma votes aye. Motion passes on to City Council five to one. Okay. Scrolling, scrolling. Erica does a lot of mailing. Uh, okay, do we have Petitioner Andres up next? Is that what you have, Holly? Yes. Is oh. it Andres? Andres. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, requesting a rezone of property from I-1 Light Industrial to B-2 Community Business District. Uh, Holly, I think this was going to be a good use of Google Maps. Take us through this one. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Let me get to that spot. Hang on. Present land use is office space and some equipment and supply storage for window cleaning business. In the same building is a residential apartment. The building we're talking about or the parcel we're talking about is where the hand is right now. So I'm just going to zoom in. Um, so this is actually a down zone. So this would be a less intensive use that's proposed from the use that is currently allowed. Um, the petitioner currently uses the property for office space uh, and some equipment. Uh, and supply storage for his window cleaning business in the same building is a residential apartment. Um, the petitioner has um, tried to uh, rent some of that space for office but has not been able to and wishes to convert a portion of the building into additional uh, rental space uh, for a tenant um, for living space. Um, in order to do that, uh, so right now, currently in our zoning, we do not allow any residential uses in the I-1 district. Um, probably in a year, that might change, but um, in, the, in the current, uh, with the current uh, rules that we have, um, the next, the only zone that would, com uh, I guess, would accommodate both uses would be the B2 Community Business District. Um, surrounding the property um, to the north and to the west or east are um, industrial and open space um, to the west is uh i got those mixed up on my handout here but um to the west is some commercial and single family residential the um there's a list of what all is allowed in a community business district. Again, this is um, more restrictive than what's allowed in the I zoning district. Um, some of the considerations uh, for rezoning, and this would be a rezone of the parcel and then also a change to the future land use map um, from industrial to commercial retail. Um, some considerations, the consistency of the proposed zoning um, with our future land use map and comprehensive plan, the compatibility of the site with the uses permitted in the proposed zoning district, the compatibility of all potential uses allowed in the zoning district with the surrounding uses, um, any possible impact on the surrounding area, the capacity of the existing infrastructure and services to accommodate the uses permitted in the district without health, compromising the health, safety, and welfare of the residents, whether the uses permitted in the zoning district will cause detrimental impacts, um, primarily environmental. Uh, the boundaries of the requested zoning district are sufficient to meet uh, dimensional regulations for the proposed zoning district. Uh, we don't have a minimum for uh, the B2. The applicability of the applicant 
uh, the ability of the applicant to satisfy any requirement. He's not adding anything to the exterior of the property. He's just um, going to do some renovation to the interior of the building. Um, I'll just quick go through the, the B2 allowed uses. Um, the principal purpose is to permit uh, establishment of commercial shopping centers, which offer a wide variety of consumer goods and services. Um, generally located along major highways and thoroughfares, accommodate automotive oriented establishments. Um, generally, uh, all principal or conditional uses as regulated in B1 are allowed. And then if you go through every single chapter, um, uh, B1 allows RO, RO allows R2, R2 allows R1. Um, so other residential options are available. So this would be like an apartment, so this would be like an art, well, like a multifamily in a commercial area. And again, we do allow a single family actually right now in our commercial. Um, small retail store establishments uh, up to 70,000 square feet personal services and business services, um, restaurants, uh, processing, bakery catering, uh, cleaning, uh, ice storage, this is older, and distribution, yeah. <laughs> we are updating this, but yeah, we have ice storage. Um, minor fabrication and repair, like television repair shops, plumbing shops, um, drive-in uses like banks and uh, financial institutions, eating places, um, home businesses, uh, uh, hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, uh, generally, and then there are conditional uses. Um, commercial recreation, like theaters, uh, swimming pools, skating rinks, which don't exist anymore either, right? Um, driving ranges, similar open air facilities, animal hospitals, veterinary clinics, um, generally, we are public utilities, uh, radio stations, warehousing, oh no, not warehousing, uh, yeah, and residential. Uh, bottling works, so this is where it gets, I think I said that wrong, hang on. So those are all permitted. Those are all permitted uses. Conditional uses are bottling works, uh, mining, limited manufacturing, uh, automotive service and farm implements, warehousing, storage, and wholesaling, and large retail store establishments over 70,000 square feet. And then any accessory uses as would be uh, typical of the use allowed. Holly, I don't know if you're able to do this, but can you throw up the current future land use map, you know, the one with the colors up on the screen? You know, unfortunately, I didn't pull up. This isn't my computer, so I don't, I didn't pull up the, uh, I think last time I saved it on a drive and plugged it in so I could have it available, and I didn't do that this time. Okay. The, um, but I can tell you if I grab that. And again, so this one also did, notices also did go out. Um, we got, I got one call from a neighbor who was just curious. I didn't get any negative comments. Um, I think Erica also talked to this individual. Um, yeah, so the future land use map uh, so there's a little spot where it says subject area, and that's kind of where I.J. Holton is. And then there's a little red circle around a parcel uh, that's light purple, and that's office, light industrial. And then to the south of that, there's a dashed line, and that's where the county starts and the city ends. And then uh, to the west is some commercial retail. So. Our future land use map shows only that kind of that little 
chunk of light industrial where this property is located and then a little bit to the north of that but primarily it's allocated for commercial retail so this one would be terribly big change for that area and there are there is still some open space and some area outside the city limits that has been designated for mixed use. And if I'm reading this application correctly, there already is at least one person residing in this structure? Yeah, that's a good point. So it would go from essentially a non-conforming use to conforming. So it's nice that we just got a, got a little bit of background in non-conforming uses. So that's something that obviously the commission approved sometime in the past? No, I'm guessing, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing it probably came in, was probably annexed in oh, okay. with the living space. Uh, do you know, can you speak to that? So this is uh, the applicant. Can you state your name and, and address? Nick Andrus. I live at 4040 um, Berkshire Road, Rochester, Minnesota, and I own that building. Uh, we bought it from Doug Gerhardt 16 years ago, and there was an apartment then. Okay. So, and it's been rented ever since. And can you talk a little bit about, because uh, it's hard to tell looking at a commercial building, so um, amount of apartments, what size of them, what this will sort of look like, well, hopefully, when you're done with it? Yeah, it's an 800 uh, square foot, one bedroom apartment is what I want to put where the office used to be. And upstairs is a 900 square foot, uh, two bedroom and that's what was there in the past. So there'll only be two apartments? Right. Okay. And, and then, then the other side of the building is where uh, our employees start their day. We have two employees that start their day. We um, have a couple trucks there and they get their water and go off. Okay. Um, so it's just that uh, for five years we've tried to rent that office space and with COVID and everything going on we just figured it's uh, even less of a chance of renting office space now. And uh, we just figured we wanted to turn it into something useful. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners for either Holly or the petitioner? This is also an open public hearing. If there's anybody in person or on Zoom who would like to speak to this, now is a good time for that. This is also a recommendation to council. So if we go forward with this, it would be a rezone. It would be uh, take something from a non-conforming to a conforming use, and it would actually be slightly more restrictive um, in what its use will be, the, what the parcel could be used for. And there was no concerns from any of the neighbors. Is that correct, Holly? Yes, that's correct. Any thoughts from anyone on this one? I will make a motion to rezone the parcel at 1101 8th Avenue Southeast Austin from an I-1 light industrial to a B-2 commercial. Excellent, so we have a motion to approve the rezone, do we have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this one? Okay, then I'll do the roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Postma votes aye. Commissioner Swenson. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. 
Aye. Commissioner Burroughs. Aye. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Motion passes unanimously on the City Council. Uh, thanks for joining us. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to. Okay. Continuing on. Okay, we have a petition from SNS Towing to amend a conditional use permit. Holly, talk to us about this one. Uh, SNS Towing, uh, the uh, owner, Ron Schrader is here. Is it Schrader? Schroeder? Ron Schroeder is here. Um, uh, he, the location of the business is at 401 First Avenue Southwest. Um, right across from uh, Papa Murphy's, right? Yeah. Papa Murphy's is across the street. Um, the this is an amended conditional use permit. So the 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 existing conditional use permit that was granted um, was for a, a car sales uh, business, and the petitioner uh, when he purchased the property. Um, added uh, towing to the business. Um, it's in a B2 community business district. Um, the, to the north is a commercial property. Um, to the south is a single multifamily residential R2. And east and west of the property um, is actually B2. So the, the zoning along um, uh, First Avenue Southwest is B2, so there's an error in the materials there. Um, so I have um, listed again for conditional uses um, in uh, this particular area, automotive sales, uh, farm implements, automobiles, trucks, trailers, farm implements for sale display, trailer lots, pair garages, body and fender shops, paint shops, provided they're at least 50 feet from any residential district, and the premises shall be screened by a site obscuring solid wall, fence, or vegetative screen at least six feet high, where it joins in the rear or on the sides of any residential district, public park, school, or church. Um, this is kind of difficult to fit in. I mean, it doesn't say exactly towing, but automotive service, uh, trucks, trailers, things for Display, things that are being stored, it's all mortar vehicles. Um, so this seems like uh, something that would fall under these requirements um, for our B2 district. Um, again, things to consider that we went over um, for the previous conditional use permit is that the use will not create excessive burden on public facilities and utilities that is sufficiently compatible or separated um, by distances or screening from adjacent ag or residentially zoned use land um, so that the existing homes will not be depreciated in value and that there will be no deterrence to development of vacant land. That the use in the opinion of the planning commission is reasonably related to the overall needs of the city and existing land use. The structure and site shall have an appearance that will not have an adverse effect upon adjacent properties the use is consistent with the purposes of the zoning chapter and zoning district, which the applicant intends to locate. The use um, will not cause traffic hazard or congestion. Um, talks about existing businesses nearby, nearby will not be adversely affected um, uh, by intrusion of noise, glare, general unsightliness. The use will not result in unnecessary destruction of natural features. Um, I don't. I don't believe we haven't talked about any changes to the property, right? You're not changing the the building or anything like no, that. We, we the yeah. So it's I don't know. Let, Holly, I can you repeat up. that for the folks on Zoom? Yeah, the petitioner. I just kind of threw a question at him whether he intended to um, do any improvements on the building, and he said they had previously. 
um, updated some areas of the building, but and then added a six foot chain link fence. Um, I did combine the some of the requirements. I left in the, the existing requirements and added some uh, uh, recommendations uh, for the amended CUP. Um, so the petitioner again, you know, pur purchased a former car lot uh, for a towing business. Um, and he can talk about this, but I understand he's got a license, license to do, to sell cars um, from that location. And, uh, but because the existing CUP was for car sales only, um, with the petitioner adding the towing business later, um, it seemed necessary to do some amendment. Um, the towing does have some similarities to the car lot, but there's also a storage of damaged and inoperable, inoperable vehicles. Um, if the planning commission should choose to approve this requested conditional use permit, um, I would ask you to consider, um, and I'll have to verify with the petitioner some of these things. Um, so hard surface material, asphalt or concrete shall be provided for off-street parking and sales area. Um, the original CUP required a six foot high wooden fence or vegetative screen placed adjacent to the south property line of the development um, to provide adequate screening to the adjacent multifamily property. Um, so I noted that a chain link was installed but should probably have some screening uh, as required by the ordinance. Um, or should have some screening as required by ordinance. That the landscaping, uh, there was a requirement that landscaping be provided and meet with overall approval of the planning and zoning office. Um, I added that unintentional and volunteer vegetation along the fence line should be cleared and maintained, of course, um, you know, on their property as they're able to get to it. The mechanical repairs uh, should not be made on site. That's from the original. Um, hours of business shall be clarified. That's from the original, although I assume in this instance that would be 24 seven. But again, I can, well, I'll give you a minute. Uh, so can you just state your name and address and then I can just kind of ask you a couple questions. Ron, Ron Schroeder, 2111 Third Avenue Southeast. So, Mr. Schroeder, thanks for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, Holly touched on it, this is one of the questions I was gonna have, was hours of operation. Um, I'm guessing are gonna be a little different for you than what a normal car lot would have. Well, our regular, we have regular business hours, nine to five, although our towing business operates 24 hours, but we're on call. So, each of us take a truck home, and you know, when we get a call, we go out. So, could, could possibly say so you get called at 2 a.m. to grab a car and would it then get brought back to this lot at that time of night? It, it does happen, yeah. We tow for the Austin Police Department and the Sheriff's Department, so most of the cars we have there are all police tows. Okay. So yeah, they, we, you know, I, I believe just the other night we had one that was dropped off probably one in the morning, but we try to be courteous of the neighbors and everything and you know we don't make a lot of noise or anything like that do your tow vehicles have um required like backup noise sounds that i know some vehicles that are oversized are required to have we have one truck that has a backup alarm but that trucks we don't even use it anymore that's we're trying to sell that one okay holly you said you had a couple questions Which, ve which vegetation? So there's a lot of trees and shrubs and... On the south side? On the west side? On the, the south side. That, that fence over there is ours. We own the property to the south as well. Okay. Would there be any issue with cleaning out that? We've actually been clearing oh. that out. Yeah, especially along the south, all the dead trees and the brush that's been back there. We've slowly been cleaning it all out uh, along with the whole property. So would the intention then to make your current business onto that property once you've got things cleared up or is that going to be something separate? 
I don't understand that. Oh, sorry. Maybe I was confused. It sounds like you owned another property next to this property, or is it all one there's, lot? There's actually four um, abstracts to this property. So I, I, I'm not quite sure how it was put together, but when we bought it, it came with four abstracts. So I believe it was four separate properties. Okay. Holly's going to show us. I don't know if I can get back to where I was. <laughs> she zoomed in too far. Yeah. And now I'm just going down the street where I don't even know where it is. Okay. I don't really know how to get back. So while she's working on that, uh, we have a microphone with Ms. with uh, the petitioner right now. Do the commissioners have any questions that they'd like to ask of him? Will there will there be a limit to how many cars will be towed there and stored there? Or is there a limit to how long they can be there before they need to be moved? Well, by law, we have to keep them for 45 days before we can dispose of them if they go unclaimed. Most of them get picked up, though. There's, there's a few there. If people don't have insurance or whatever, they end up sitting until 45 days, and then we try to get rid of them a day or two after that. Roughly how many vehicles fit on, in your storage area? In the fenced-in portion, we could, oof, uh, I don't know, 20. Okay. Any other questions for from the uh, from the commissioners for the petitioner. Look for Papa Murphy's. <laughs> yeah. It's right here. Yeah, that's it right there. Why am I not seeing it pointed? Put your hand one block to the right and then one block south. Isn't it right here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep, thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is it. So, um, so yeah, this is two parcels. Um, this south parcel. Yeah, we own that one. Yeah, that's but it's zoned residential right now. Right. So they probably need to do some privacy screens. Can, can you guys hear Holly right now? Oh, sorry. Um, so th this is two parcels, two separate parcels. Um, the, the one to the south is zoned residential. So according to the existing CUP, I mean, I guess unless something was changed, they should have some kind of uh, privacy fencing on this north part. I mean, I know all of it is enclosed with, um, what do you need, Marty? Oh, he wants to talk to you. Um, the, uh, there should probably be some privacy fencing in this area to, to fence off this, what's considered a residential district, um, or to provide a screen here, or maybe some vegetation. I think they have an entrance, um, just on this end, and then it goes, 
I think it's just all of this is fenced in and there's no, I'm not sure if there's a separation here. I'll have to check with Mr. Schroeder about that, but that would be an area where there could be some screening potentially, or maybe vegetative line of you know, shrubs or something between the two, or, or maybe rezone it, you know, but again, I mean, then that parcels kind of right in amongst all these residential properties. So I had a question. So I was just looking at this and um, so this parcel to the south is residential. Mm -hmm. um, is there any screening or do you have any privacy we, between those two parcels? We've got like a north? six foot chain link. Can back. you speak oh, into? I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you. Uh, we do have a six feet foot uh, chain link fence there, but we can put a, you know, visual barrier up with that if that's an issue. Okay. Holly, when I'm looking at some of the pictures provided, it looks like there's some cars in a fenced in area on grass that's not necessarily asphalt or paved. So I believe one of the re recommendations you have from staff is that anything in that enclosed area would be paved. Is that correct? Yeah, I think is that is some of that paved, but you. Yeah, some of it is concrete. There's there is concrete inside there on the west side of the lot. That those pictures there are they look like they're before we bought the property. Uh huh. So you don't see the fence or anything. Um, that wooden fence that was there wasn't even mounted. It you know it wasn't even secured there. It would blow over in the wind and everything. So we eliminated all that. But yeah, we do have. We do have um, on the west side of the fenced in area that is uh, concrete, but we are actually looking into having the whole thing, the whole thing inside there asphalt. Okay. So if that were a requirement, that wouldn't be a problem for you? Well, I mean, it wouldn't have to be done immediately necessarily, but it would need to be done at some point in the next, yeah, you know. We've been thinking about doing that since we bought the place just because it makes it so much easier for plowing and everything else. Could you guys hear that? He just noted that they've been uh, considering doing the hard surfacing because it just makes it easier for plowing and maintaining the property. I heard it. Are you in the, like, we're applying for, um, like they have in the winter time where like one company will do once a month or something like that, where possibly you'd be very busy in the winter time during a certain time bringing in vehicles in that area or is that? Yeah, we, we do do that. We've actually been in there for almost two years already. So we've been, uh, towing out of there for it'll be in February it'll be two years and we do oh, okay. we, we do do that with law enforcement um, we don't get too many nights like that I think this last winter we only did it one night where we were hauling uh, vehicles off the street for snow removal and stuff like that okay and you've been doing it for the last two years yes yes and we've talked to we get along with all the neighbors. We haven't had any complaints, not to us anyway, and I'm not aware of any. In fact, uh, we've had compliments since we've been there, so I don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, um, there were uh, notices sent out to the neighbors and we did not get any calls from uh, anyone concerned about the conditional use request. Other thoughts, questions from the commissioners? I should note that this is a public hearing. Uh, anyone uh, in person or on Zoom interested in speaking to this matter? Can we get a sense of how cars are 
the in the lot in that <laughs> the in that photo there. Sorry, I gotta go get a drink of water quick, but I'll let you tell them how many what your maximum cars or, or what you expect to have in the car lot. Or not car lot. Well how many how many for sale and then how many would you store as part of your towing maximum? Yeah, the, we don't right now we got I think five cars out there that are for sale. Um we probably don't plan on having more than eight to ten. And as far as the impound yard, this is kind of the slow time of year, so we generally have I don't know, eight to ten in there at any given time. And of course, come winter time, it could be it could be pretty full. Like it we had one day last winter when we were doing a snow removal where the, the fenced in yard was full. Any other thoughts or questions? All right, I'll note that the staff report, um, this does have some recommendations if this is approved for site development, including hard surface material, which we referred to, um, either asphalt or concrete, um, six foot, fence or vegetative screen, which I think Holly talked a little bit about. Um, hours of business, uh, it sounds like the actual use could be 24 seven, but the part that serves customers, um, not, not that long, I believe. Um, no mechanical repairs made on site. Uh, we didn't touch on lighting. Uh, is there lights on 24 7 in that property has anything changed with lighting since it was previously car sales um we have some outdoor lighting on the building which is pretty much uh motion activated mm -hmm. and we have security cameras and everything out there as well but that, that's about it everything's motion activated so we don't have any lights on that are on 24 hours okay the existing CUP just required that the lights not shine into the neighboring lots, you know, yeah. that they'd be like downward. Okay. Um, the petitioner just indicated that there were no lights that would shine onto the neighboring lots. Holly, you didn't hear from any of the neighbors, right, when you sent something out? No, and I was kind of surprised because, you know, I mean, but I, again, I mean, First Avenue is pretty commercial. Mm -hmm. um, so the neighbors in that area might just be used to having a little bit you know more noise and activity around their parcels and I mean it's good to know um, that we you know that uh, you know from what Mr. Schroeder is saying that he's seen as a good neighbor I mean the fact that we didn't get any complaints you know is uh, you know a good sign that that may be true yeah. and we haven't had any I guess other than this issue and maybe a, you know maybe there were a couple other things that we've worked with them on i mean they all you know were compliant as soon as they knew there was an issue okay all right well uh, we'll take any other questions or else we'll entertain a motion from one of the commissioners This is Commissioner Swenson, and I'll make a motion to approve, um, to amend the conditional use permit to add towing to the conditional use permit and to um, require a hard surface material and to also have a vegetative screen or fence on the south side of the property. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner Swenson. Do I hear a second? Is that actually including all of the recommendations or just those two? Commissioner Swenson, would you like to amend to include all of the recommendations listed by staff? 
Yes. Okay. Motion amended to include all recommendations. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Okay, then we will do a roll call vote on approving the CUP with the recommendations by staff. Commissioner Srock. Aye. Commissioner Burroughs. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Nay. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Swenson. Aye. Commissioner Postma votes aye. Motion passes five to one. Okay, is that all that we have this week, Holly? Yes, um, I would like you all to think about, um, so I know, I just wanna make a little bit of an announcement. So um, uh, Dama Yaun, uh, one of our commissioners has resigned. Um, I do expect Jim Mino to not be with us in January. And then I also expect uh, Mr. Postma, uh, Commissioner Postma not to be with us um, as of January. Um, I do have one individual interested to do, you know, potentially come on the commission in January. But if you know anyone who's interested, um, just have them fill out an application online under boards and commissions. Um, and I can certainly talk to anybody as well to let them know what it would entail to be a planning commissioner. Um, and then in addition to that, those of you who are still on the commission, um, we'd certainly be uh, wanting to know if any of you would be willing to be uh, the chair and vice chair. So I can get any feedback on that, that would be terrific. I know somebody has already contacted me about that, but um, so we would be appointing a new chair and vice chair in January as well. It's super or fun. December. You get a little hammer. <laughs> that helps sell it. Um, That's do all you, I am. Is, the, is one of those positions open right now, or are they all until yeah, January? Yeah, Commissioner Yowns is open right now. Okay, so we actually could use somebody right now. So Yeah, we definitely could. Talk with all the folks that you know, especially folks who maybe would have never considered doing some government service. That would be awesome. Hey. Oh, yeah, one more thing. So yep. we are updating our zoning code. Yep. If any of you are interested in seeing any of the drafts that we have of the zoning code, um, you know, it's hard to know what's different and what's, you know, what's the same. But, um, but just get, I guess just going through it and having a little bit of familiarity with it um, wouldn't hurt. And I, I need to send that to Mr. Byram too for his reading enjoyment. So, but just let me know if you're interested in looking at any of those documents. I know a couple of people have expressed interest, but um, that is a project that we hope to have completed by the end of the year. And so now, now we're just getting some, some documents to review. Okay, awesome. I, I think we all are looking forward to a little bit of a refresh so that maybe we don't talk about ice storage anymore. <laughs> any other thoughts or questions from the commissioners? If not, I'd take a motion to adjourn. This is Commissioner Swenson. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. And we have a second. Okay, and we're going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Postma votes aye. Commissioner Swenson. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Burroughs. Aye. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.